This project with the soybean nematodes, we're, we're really focusing on those, those plant parasitic nematodes. Uh, sometimes they're called our hidden enemies of, of soybeans within the state. So they're very small, uh, but they make a huge impact in causing significant yield losses in some of our uh, soybean fields here in Arkansas and the Mid-South. Pigweeds you can see, uh, moths you can see, worms you can see, these you can't. So we utilize the plants to almost tell us if we have a problem or we have to take a soil sample to be able to say what population of nematodes we have in the soil. The most dramatic thing that happens if you have a very susceptible plant and a very high population of southern root knot nematode in that field, that plant will crash as it gets to the late maturity stages and you'll go from a green plant to a dead plant but it's too late in the season to do anything about it. The Nematode Diagnostic Lab has uh, participated in the survey, and this survey is supported by the Soybean Promotion Board to provide free nematode assays to growers. Uh, so just by sampling do we know that the problem is increasing and becoming more problematic. So it's not just one area. Um, every county that produces soybeans within the state um, has some area within that county that has an issue with southern root knot nematode. That's a southern root knot nematode infecting that root system. Each one of those galls is going to reduce the water uptake by 50%. That also reduces the nutrient uptake. That's why a lot of times too you see a nutrient deficiency. The more that that system's galled, it tells me that that plant is very susceptible. We'll post that every year on the, uh, the Arkansas Row Crops blog with all the galling data and as well as the yield data. Fall is the best time to sample for uh, soybean nematodes. That's because the population is at its greatest uh, at that point than any other time in the season. Uh, collecting that sample, uh, submitting it to the nematode diagnostic lab and hope that sample should represent that portion of the field. So about 20 to 40, maybe 50 acres at max. Nematodes are, are greatly impacted. The population by soil texture use some of the soil maps and as those contours change within the field, take your samples based on the soil type in your field. So it's a free sample. I get an idea of what I have in my field, if I have a problem or I don't. Uh, first, we want to keep monitoring that population every couple of years, seeing if our rotation practices are impacting that. So for southern root knot nematode, corn is very susceptible. Some grain sorghum uh, hybrids are a poor host, so that would be good for the grower. Some of them are excellent hosts that would be bad for the grower. Uh, then cotton is another great host. The best one we have in the state is, is peanuts. Uh, and, and peanut is a true non-host for that. Uh, the other crop we can grow is rice. The flooded condition actually helps to control it. Then utilizing host plant resistance. Um, a lot of our maturity group fours um, are very susceptible. You go into the group fives, uh, there's more options there when it comes to herbicide traits um, as well as the resistance for uh, against the nematodes. The, the other thing that really impacts the severity or the yield loss contributed by southern root knot nematode is the environment. The summer is very hot, growers are having to irrigate, there's a lot of stress on those plants, but a grower has no control over those. Even if he waters a lot, it's not going to make any difference for those uh, fields that have nematodes. And there's no foliar application that can be done to cure that but knowing where you stand uh, is gonna be the most important tool that you have in your toolbox. Mm -hmm.